This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. In wintertime, here on the Sierra Mountain Range near Yosemite in Northern California, I heat my adobe ranch by wood stoves and fireplaces. During the spring and summer months, we bring in truck and cart loads of white pine, yellow pine, and tamarack for kindling. Then split heavy logs of oak and stack them on the long wood porches under the eaves to keep them dry from winter frost and snow. As the nights grow longer and chillier in September and October, we build the first fires of the fall, starting them with crackling pine cones, oak sap spitting and sizzling beneath the bark of the roasting logs, and the fresh forest fragrance of wood fire curling from the soot-black brick chimney into the frosty night. And the colder the winter, the closer everyone sits to the fire. And so it is that when the world seems coldest... When you lose a job or someone whom you love dies, or the hurtful winds of hatred cut through your clothes and chill you to your muscle and your marrow, you need the fires of friendship to warm your soul and to thaw your frostbitten feelings. But you need not only the friendship of people in that hour. You need, above all, the friendship of God. You need to draw near to the faithful fellowship of the Father of all, to the heartwarming love of the eternal Creator, the very one who brought you into being and who cares for you with an everlasting compassion and concern. For God loves you. You are a son or daughter of this living God. Know that and begin to live as you've really longed and yearned to live for all of your life. Edgar Sheffield Brightman once said, Everybody wants something. The practical man is the man who knows how to get what he wants. The philosopher is the man who knows what he ought to want. But the ideal man is the man who knows how to get what he ought to want. End of quote. Think of this. Day after day during his voyage to America, Christopher Columbus, the explorer, made this following determined entry into his ship's log. Just this one sentence, quote, This day we sailed on. There are days when it requires all of the courage a man or woman can muster to do just that, to sail on, to persist in your purposes and trust that God has a plan and a purpose beyond the travail of this moment. Consider Thomas Edison, the great inventor. When he was a boy, he had this experience. He wrote about it. He said, one day I overheard my school teacher telling the inspector of the schools that I was addled, that I was not mentally right, and that it would not be worth while keeping me in school any longer. I was so hurt by this, he wrote, that I burst out crying and went running home and told my mother. But instead of becoming discouraged, he became determined by that incident. And no person after that day had reason to speak of Edison ever again in that manner, because criticism did not defeat him, it made him determined. Great men and women possess great purposes, or should I say are possessed by great purposes. Admiral Robert Perry wrote, the determination to reach the North Pole had become so much a part of my whole being that, strange as it may seem, I long ago ceased to think of myself save as an instrument for the attainment of that end. Again, the power of persistent determination. After reading of Admiral Perry's struggles to reach the North Pole, there was a certain boy who wrote these words in his diary, and I quote, I have decided to become the first man to reach the North Pole. And years later, this very same boy became not only the first man to fly over the North Pole, but the first person to fly over the South Pole as well. His name recorded in history, Admiral Richard E. Byrd. What goal, what dream, what great burning purpose, what ideal do you have for your life? Why are you here? Seek first the will and wisdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, said Jesus, and all things will be added to you. And again, Jesus said, be not deceived, for some will come saying, the kingdom is here or the kingdom is there. Jesus said, for the kingdom of God is within you. He said, be not content to lay up your treasure upon the earth, where moth and rust corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But he said, lay up your treasure in heaven, for where your treasure is, 
there will your heart be also. Let your treasure be spiritual. Let it be in the love of God and the love of others. For only in love is life's fulfillment found. A candle burning in the night gives forth light as it is consumed until finally it is burnt and melted to nothing. You too were created to give forth light as the days and hours of your life are consumed by the passing of time. And let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Live as the son or daughter of God you were born and created to be, for nothing less than that will fully satisfy your soul. There's a sort of restless unhappiness so deep and so enduring that some psychologists and philosophers have termed it divine dissatisfaction or divine discontent. It is a certain sadness with anything less than the infinite and eternal, anything less than the everlasting and unbounded spiritual experience of the divine, of truth, of beauty and goodness, and ultimately of God. If you are a victim of such discontent, but know not how, nor why, nor for what. It may well be that yours is a divine discontent, a religious restlessness, a yearning of spirit that burns like a smoldering coal in your soul. Nothing less than the spiritual can quench your questing of spirit. The deepest longings in your life are longings for the love of God, and until you fill that inner need for God, all of your questing for happiness will be in vain. If you're in an ocean, lake, or swimming pool and swallow a lungful of water, and you're desperately gasping for air, nothing but air will satisfy you. More water won't help, a liverwurst sandwich won't help, a purple vitamin pill, a stick of raspberry gum, an unabridged dictionary, a baseball bat, or a back rub. None of these will help. When you're drowning, what you want and what you need is air. And when you are suffering from this divine discontent in your heart, in your soul, in your life, what you need is God. Nothing else will do. Nothing less will do. For the need for God can be satisfied only by God. You may have sought for years of your life for happiness and satisfaction in power, wealth and fame, in drugs, possessions, hobbies and diversions, in entertainments, recreations and passing pastimes, but nothing on this earth and nothing in heaven above will satisfy this divine discontent in your inner heart and soul until you find and come to know the living God. Without God, life is a staircase to no place, a map without north, south, east, or west, a watch without hands or digits, a compass with no needle, a calendar printed without days, months, and years. That's what life is without God, a swarm of uncertainties and a beehive of bewilderment. And you deserve better than that. For God created you for himself, for fellowship with himself, to live in the joy of sonship or daughterhood with God. Said, Jesus, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I have come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. Claim that in living faith, and God will hammer out your question marks into exclamation points. God will transform your insecurities to securities, your confusion to conviction, your fears to faith, and your sorrows into joy. You are a son or daughter of the living God who loves you with an everlasting love. God created you for fellowship with him, and nothing less than the finding and knowing of God will satisfy your soul. And in living faith, you can begin that new life as you were born and created to live. This very instant, right here, right now, this heartbeat. If you're interested in what I've been talking about on this broadcast, then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man. Who are you anyway? Why are you here on this earth? Are you somehow kin to the Creator with a destiny beyond the stars? If that isn't an intriguing idea, I don't know what is. Write 
We have literature I've written on these very topics when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Post Office Box 3080-3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. That's Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>